20 years ago this fall, America was obsessed with an investigation of a sitting president accused of lurid misdeeds. And a House of Representatives controlled by the opposition went on to impeach the president over what the investigation found. 20 years later, the man who led that investigation is out with a new memoir, and his expertise is suddenly back in demand. Vice News sat down with Ken Starr in Palm Beach to talk about what's different and what isn't this time around. There's all this talk of the Mueller report, that it might even somehow look like the Starr report. And I'm hoping you can explain kind of your thoughts on that. I'm not sure, to be honest, what to expect. What I do know is that the regulations under which he was appointed do not contemplate a fulsome kind of report. All things considered, I think there will be a report that is sent by the Attorney General, the acting Attorney General to Congress. And I think it will tell us the story of what, what he found. It's not required, so there was a dialing back from the independent counsel reporting requirements that required the independent counsel to report directly to the House of Representatives and a pretty low threshold with no guidance as to how fulsome, how complete the report should be. But in the public interest, I have a feeling the Attorney General will feel, based upon his consultation with incoming Senate Judiciary Chairman Lindsey Graham, the Attorney General would be very wise, I believe, to heed whatever advice Senator Lindsey Graham, soon to be Chairman Lindsey Graham, offers. Do you see any room to be concerned about the, the White House's approach toward the Mueller investigation? Oh, yes. Yes, no, because I think the, um, the Mueller investigation must be protected, allowed to finish its course. But there seems to be a difference in what the President says and then what the President does. I would agree with you until uh, the appointment of Attorney General Whitaker. It seems like that was action as opposed to tweeting. I, I agree with that. But the key is, it's clear that the president lacks confidence in Rod Rosenstein, right. but he hasn't fired him. Right. But now he appoints someone who he has confidence in. Right. But we haven't seen Whitaker interfere with the Mueller investigation, and that's what remains to be, remains to be seen. If he did, I think there's going to be hell to pay. But tell me about that hell to pay. What, what, what sort of guardrails do you see functioning at that point? If he does something untoward, the Senate will find some way to express itself. And of course, we have a House soon to be controlled by the other party. And the House has weapons as well. So I don't want to fan the flames. Please, America, don't go down the road entitled impeachment. It's the wrong way to go. We've had two presidential impeachments. Neither has succeeded. One was entirely political. But now we know from the Clinton investigation that the president can even be proven to have committed crimes. But unless there's a close nexus with the conduct of the office itself, even a federal criminal <laughs> can continue to occupy uh, the office of the presidency and the view of the American people. It seems to be that you're implying that impeachment is better suited for national security issues when the underlying issue is a national security well, issue. Well, I would add to that, though, one of the constitutionally enumerated offenses, which is bribery. Mm -hmm. So that's just, you have used your power in order to enrich yourself, right? And of course, treason is the sort of ultimate crime against the state, right? I think the American people have this wise instinct for stability and let's allow the electoral process to go forward. In terms of the appointment of Matt Whitaker, there is a lot of suspicion that his main qualification for the job uh, were his public statements that were critical of the investigation. If that were the reason that Trump put him in power, would you see that as highly improper? Not, uh, not improper in any legal sense. It becomes then a political question. The president, under the law, has that prerogative under the Vacancies Act. So I think Congress could, might be well advised to relook at the vac Vacancies Act. Would it be an abuse of power to limit the Mueller investigation? It might be. It might be. It would obviously depends on, 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 it really would. It would depend on the facts. I think the nation has been waiting for a long time for a definitive view, opinion, may not be the definitive answer, the definitive opinion on collusion. And we still don't have that, right? If Mueller finds strong evidence of presidential misconduct, criminal misconduct, abuse of power, what should Mueller do? My own view is the president can be indicted. 
Uh, but that's not the Justice Department's view, and that's not a partisan view. And so I think it then becomes then an issue for after the president leaves office, in terms of the possible uh, uh, criminal uh, approach, uh, and then a judgment as to what, if anything, needs to be reported to the, the, the House of Representatives, to Congress more generally, not to the House. So in other words, a possible indictment after the presidency yeah. or impeachment during the presidency. Those are the two avenues that, that I see.